Well, hello everyone. This is Dan at Dan's Fish. Um, I know it's been a little while since I posted anything on YouTube. And the reason for that is this extravagant mess you see behind me. Um, and across the rest of the room here. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm tearing out the basement, basically. I'm tearing out the old fish room. I've torn down a bunch of walls and stuff. And um, I'm going to expand the facility. And so it's going to now be a little bigger. It's 850 square feet once this is all done. Um, and yeah, so as you can see behind me, um, that, the blue area, is what used to be the fish room. And now the walls are gone. And um, I've torn out the carpet in the basement here, as you can see, it's a big mess. <laughs> um, but um, I have a, a floor grinder that I'm going to rent and I'm gonna grind down all that carpet, grind off all the paint um, and turn it into, um, you know, just a, a nice new cement floor basically. Take off the first little layer of cement on this floor and I'm gonna put an epoxy floor down on it. So it'll be nice and waterproof and, and nice to work in. Um, I went, was today gonna go rent a tile scraper to get off all of this, uh, where's my finger? It's backwards, all this stuff. This is all tile, like really old linoleum or something like that tile that was put down here. Um, but there's a big thunderstorm right now and so I can't get that and put it in the back of my pickup truck and bring it here uh, without damaging it. It can't get wet. It runs on electricity. So um, instead of scraping tile today, I'm, I'm giving you the update. So um, what'll happen is, um, well, oh, this water heater is going away, by the way. Um, so I'll have this room saved. So this water heater, we're gonna put a, an on-demand gas water heater on the wall there, probably somewhere by those washing machines and dryer. Um, those will go away. And this used to be the bathroom, and I was actually um, going to keep this as a bathroom, but there was kind of a funky smell, and whoever built the bathroom put carpet in it. So I went and I pulled up the carpet, and underneath the carpet, it was just particle board. So over the years, water and particle board have been mixing because it's just carpet on top, nothing waterproof. And it's just this disintegrated, just nasty mess. So I decided to tear out the whole bathroom. Um, no one ever used it. I only used it for the fish room for drains and stuff. So um, I just tore that out as well. So uh, what's there is the drain system. Uh, there was a shower drain here and a toilet drain there. Um, and I have them covered right now, otherwise my cats will uh, use that pit as a litter box. And so I don't want them doing that. So um, somehow here I'm going to install um, a drain system that will work well for the fish room. Uh, what I'd really like to do is get a nice big sink um, that I can, you know, put tanks up on and, and stuff like that. It has a, just a really big sink area with a big pull down spray nozzle. I think that would be really nice to put right here. Um, that might be in a later iteration, but that's what I'd like to do. Um, so anyway, let me kind of show you what the plan is. So this is the view behind me when you first come down the stairs. And so along this wall, I will have a, a rack of tanks going all the way down the basement, all the way along that wall. And then I'll give myself a three, three and a half foot aisle, and then another rack of tanks, three, three and a half foot aisle, another rack of tanks, and so on across here. Um, and doing that, I can fit about 70, 75 gallon tanks down here. So that's the plan. Um, I'm going to be insulating all this. Um, I'm hoping in the ceiling, it's pretty gnarly, this old ceiling. This was built in 1925, and it's had a lot of different owners. Um, and so each owner has messed up the ceiling and the floor and the walls and the bathroom and everything in their own special way. And so I'm just tearing it out and starting it again. The ceiling, um, I have an electrician coming in 
So there'll be electricity running across the top of the ceiling um, along each row, so it'll be easy to plug stuff in there. Um, the flooring, again, I'm doing an, an epoxy floor. I already ordered all the epoxy and stuff. I'm just um, needing to strip out this linoleum. And then I found, finally, it took forever, but I found somewhere that uh, rents a cement grinder um, so I can grind the cement down. It's an hour and a half away in another town, but that's okay, that's worth it. Um, if I pay someone to do it, it's, it's a whole, whole lot more. So right now I'm planning on renting it. Um, that could change, <laughs> but it doesn't seem that hard to grind down a floor. Um, it's pretty, pretty self-explanatory. So electrician will come in, make those, all those um, outlets up here safe for water. So the row will go down and at the end of each row, we'll have a sump pump. Uh, in, a, in a bucket, in a container, to take the drainage from that row and take it up and over the ceiling and into the drain area over there where the, over there, that way, yeah, there, where the bathroom was. Um, or I might not, I might actually take it over and where the washing machine hookups go in here, um, I might expand that and have one downpipe for each set of racks to go right into the, the drain system. If I drain it into the floor, then it has to go into this, um, into this sump pump here to pump out. And my fear is that one day that pump will go out and I'll have <laughs> tons of water in this facility and I don't want that. So I'm, I'm trying to figure out if I want to do that or if I want to do this, and I think this is the option I'm going for. There is a way to do this so that it could be uh, fairly fail-safe, um, which is I could put another sump in here. Whoop, sorry, it's hard to get the camera angle. In here, that drains to this sump here. And so if that first sump ever failed, then the water would go into there and I'd have a backup. So that's another option. It's either two sumps um, or expanding this manifold that doesn't need a sump to drain. It just drains straight out. Um, so it'll be automatic water changes. I'm looking at a 100% water change every day. Um, and I'm, I'm still figuring out how to do that. I've been talking to, to John over at Gemco um, if you ever do a fish room, you should get to know Gemco and uh, look at their equipment. I'm not paid to say this. Their equipment is super high quality. The cost is reasonable for the quality. And um, they have everything you could need there to make a fish room. And if they don't have it, they know what it is and they can refer you somewhere to get it. And if you have technical questions, how big of a pump do I need to power this many tanks at this depth? Um, how, how do I drain the system? How do I depressurize the nitrogen gas that builds up in my uh, main water line during the winter, during the cold weather? Things like that. Uh, John over there, um, he, he, this is, he lives this stuff and knows all this stuff and can recommend the equipment and the processes um, that you need. So um, the water will flow into a system um, that will depress, that will uh, remove the nitrogen gas that's built into it. I'm trying to do this without any big storage tank. So I'm trying to just get a depressurization system in my main line that comes into this fish room. That'll go into all the tanks. It'll run through the end of the tanks. And at the end of each row, I'll have two sumps. Um, if the first one ever craps out, then it'll automatically flood into the second one just like I want to do in the main exit from the room. So at the end of each row, I'll have two as well. It's really important, guys. I've got, um, I've got a lot of water flowing through this, and um, I'm going to flow the water at night. So each night, um, starting at about 8 or 9 p.m. for eight hours or so, the water change will be happening. Um, and if I go to sleep and come in in the morning and that pump has failed, that's gonna be a problem. Now for safety, all the electrical outlets and things will be up high, but it'll just be a big mess and I don't want any of that. So um, I'm gonna kind of have redundancy in all those drain systems. Um, 
let's see what else oh yeah this is going to be this is where the electricity is when you first come in the door so i'm not going to have any water in this area so along this wall going from um from these breakers um on the back um a lot of that's just going to be a work area a packing station a desk um, things like that and that'll be really helpful and really nice to have I'm not gonna crowd this um, I'm gonna leave space for working I've, I've learned not to stack tanks too close together when you're talking vertical space you need workspace into the tanks and to leave yourself work area for packing for keeping your records for um, just so you don't so it doesn't become so cramped and cluttered that it's just a mess to work in because then you don't want to work in it and then the fish get neglected and that's no good. So um, that's, uh, that's electricity, um, that's kind of the drain system. Oxygen, um, I'm gonna do one, maybe two uh, linear piston pumps. Um, one will run the filters all the time and I'm debating whether sponge filters or uh, matten filters for biological filtration. And then the other one, um, is going to be just a water polisher, like a water bottle stuffed with uh, floss, kind of polyester batting, basically, to polish the water. Or maybe a corner filter stuffed with uh, floss, depending on price. I'm trying to keep the cost down as much as I can. Um, and what I don't want to happen is I don't want to feed the fish and then have the polisher suck up all the, the food. Um, so if I have two separate pumps, I can have the, um, on two separate loops, then I can have the filter going all the time, especially a matten filter. Those don't really suck up food because the surface area is so great on them. And um, then I can have the water polisher on a switch that I can just turn it off during feeding time and turn it back on when I'm done because it's not for biological filtration. It's just to take out uh, debris and detritus and keep the water clear. So um, I don't know, uh, that would be nice and fancy. So I might do that. Um, we'll see how much it costs and how much work it takes, but uh, the air will be on a big loop. And the water will be um, not quite on a loop, but a solenoid system, an automatic system. And I'm pretty excited for heat. Again, I'll insulate really well in the ceiling. Oh yeah, I was talking about that. So the ceiling, I'm, I'm gonna have um, uh, someone come in and, um, oh geez, my mind is blanked. But basically spray foam insulation, um, a couple, three inches on the roof. And then around the walls of the, the room, I'll probably do, because it costs a lot that, that spray insulation, I'll probably do what I did here which is just use these big sheets of two inch styrofoam. Uh, and then those are eight feet tall. And then from there up and across the ceiling, uh, I'll probably have the, uh, the spray insulation happen. I think, I think that'll be the best way to spend the money and get the best heat, the best R value for my buck. Um, so that's happening. Um, yeah, so Oh, for heat, um, insulated well, and then probably along this wall um, where these machines are, or maybe s around this wall um, where kind of the drain is and the work area and the pack station are, um, I'll, I'll get a gas heater installed, a wall heater. Um, I'm also doing a, a recirculation system that'll um, recirculate the heat but allow fresh air to come in. Um, what is it, an HRC system, uh, HVC system? I can't remember exactly. But the, the point is that it sucks out the old hot air and brings in new air. And as the new air comes in, it mixes with the heat of the hot air going out. And it's a much more efficient way to, to maintain air quality and keep humidity down and just keep the air fresh and pleasant to work in um, without while mitigating the heat loss as much as possible. It's, you're gonna have some heat loss, but um, I'll be having that circulation system and then the gas, uh, the gas heater going. So I'm doing most of this myself. The floor I'm doing myself. The spray foam insulation I'm not. Um, the, um, 
installing the gas on-demand water heater, the gas wall heater, and the electricity, I'm having professionals do that because I don't mess too much with plumbing or with electricity because I could really get hurt or really damage my house. So um, I don't do that. But everything else, I'm pretty much doing. Now, once the water is out of the pressurized system um, and is just flowing into the tanks and draining and stuff, I'll do all that. That's not a problem. But uh, the pressurized part, the part where it's, you know, the plumbing in the house, basically, and those pressurized pipes, someone, someone else is going to do that. Uh, so I don't have a big problem. Um, so anyway, that's where we're at. Um, let me see if I can show you... I'm going to have to pause this real quick because this, this camera doesn't allow me to flip the image. Um, and so I'm going to um, come back real quick and show you kind of like the drawn up plan to give you an idea of what this is going to look like. But anyway, this is why I haven't posted in a while. I've been really busy moving all the tanks out, tearing down my system, tearing my basement to bits, and, um, and getting ready to uh, create something that's bigger and better and more pleasant to work in. So anyway, uh, the, yeah, the plans are coming up. One second. Okay, so here are the plans. This is kind of the first iteration that I roughly drew where you'll come down. This is my stairs into this door. And along that wall is all, it's uh, two rows of 75 gallons. Um, and then an aisle and then another row. When I did this, I thought I might do 30 breeders until I couldn't find them anymore. Apparently no one makes them anymore. I didn't know that until I started looking for them. Or 40 breeders. I since decided that, no, I'm going to do 75 gallons here. Um, so the scale's a little off, but um, this is another couple rows. Um, another aisle, and then another row of 75s. And then what I want to do here is breeding facility. So um, I want to be able to do a lot of videos of breeding the fish I have and showing you how I do that, how I spawn them, how I condition them, spawn them, and, and raise the fry and all those things. And so I think this row will be smaller tanks kind of dedicated to that. Um, and then this is where the bathroom used to be, this kind of rectangle here. Um, this is where the electric comes in, the uh, breaker boxes are all here. So. This was always gonna be kind of a desk work area. Maybe the fridge goes under that. Um, and then I thought originally that I would need a couple water storage tanks to bring in water, um, gas off the gases that are dissolved in it, and then pump it to the tanks. But talking to, to John at Gemco, I think I figured out, at least in part, well, I'm, I'm I become aware that there's a way to depressurize gas and gas off things without doing that. Um, and I'm still looking at the correct mechanism for it. I know it's out there. I haven't found it. So if anyone has any advice on how to do that, um, basically what John said is there's a way to inject oxygen into the line if you have this depressurization, depressurization valve or canister. Um, and that that oxygen will bind with the nitrogen that is dissolved into the water and you can solve your problem that way so your fish don't get the bends. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to try to do that because then I don't have to have all this space taken up by water storage containers and this space taken up by water storage containers. So this right here is where the um, washing machines and dryer are now and that's going to become a workstation or desk. Um, maybe. It might also be that I find that what I run here for workstation and desk is more than enough and I don't have to do that here and I don't need these water storage containers so I might be able to make this all aquariums um, which would be awesome. But again I, I don't know yet. Um, another thing that's going to depend uh, that's going to be dependent on whether where they have to put the um, on-demand gas heater, where they have to put the HVC or HRC or whatever the air exchange unit is called, and where they have to put the uh, gas-mounted wall heater and things like that. Um, that'll be curtailed a little bit depending on where they can vent it to and things. So until I know that, I, I can't really figure out exactly what's going on this wall or exactly how this space will be used. But 
even if I can't do much here or here with aquariums, it's going to be nice to have work area and things. Um, another thing I want to do here is a bunch of live food cultures, show you guys how to do that. And just so I have it for my fish, they love live food. Um, so that's kind of the rough um, drawing to kind of get my mind around this. And then this is what it looks like kind of when it's more or less rendered. Um, so you come down the stairs here into this door, and then there's a row of 75s, row of, two rows of 75s, two rows of 75s. And then here there's a row of 75s, and this smaller, this row here of smaller tanks is my existing 30-gallon uh, rack, my 30-gallon breeders. Um, so to save on costs and things like that, I might put those there for, for starters. And then these are other random tanks and racks of tanks I have that I, I don't, haven't decided really where they go yet. Um, I hadn't decided to tear the bathroom completely apart yet when I did this because I hadn't found that big problem under the floor. Um, and so this kind of gray thing is a work area and another work area here. Um, so for shipping, somewhere to put my computer, um, somewhere to pack fish from, things like that. And then these little things, that's my freezer and fridge, which are currently just right here, waiting to be taken out so I can redo the floor. Um, now on this particular rendering, these are only um, one unit high, one tank high. I didn't worry about stacking two tanks on here because it's kind of just a, a bird's eye view, but there will be, each row will be at least two high. The 30 gallon breeders will be three high. Um, and so that's, that's kind of like, that's kind of what we're looking at. Um, so by the end of this summer, I hope to have this done. Anyway, uh, glad to see you all again. Uh, thanks for tuning in, and I'll keep you posted as, as things progress. All right.